welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. Today is Thursday, November 30th. It is 30 degrees outside, and uh, we're up and at them early. It is 7.30, and we are dressed, ready, and up and at them. And now, we are headed to the Operation Christmas Child, Samaritan's Purse, the Operation Christmas Child shoebox um, distribution center and we do this every year we our church does the shoe boxes and then every year we go up to the distribution center and sort boxes and um, go through them and if there's things in there that's not supposed to be in there you take out if a box is kind of empty they have filler toys to put in so um, that's what we're going to do so we are headed to we're gonna get a biscuit and then we're going to warm up the church van and load it up and then several people are following us and we're just going to head to charlotte so come on and go with us really have a rock. Here we are. We've arrived at the distribution center. I think the elephant is absolutely gorgeous. We're just waiting for the rest of the group to get here and to get checked in. We do the fast pass, so our leader is over there checking us in. We register online so we don't have to wait in a line to register. Just giving a view, there's Franklin Graham handing um, children the boxes. And um, I'm telling you here that we're getting in a line to um, go through. This is our lunch line, actually. We are waiting for lunch. We had broke for lunch, and we are waiting. Look who it is. It's Santa and an elf. They had Chick-fil-A sandwiches, and they were super good. And we actually went out to eat again And when we left there. Um, so here we are. Um, sorting the boxes um, these are people in our church they are sorting making sure there's nothing in there that's not supposed to be and adding things if they need to the guy in the yellow was our leader each station has a leader and he is a, a, a permanent volunteer there there I am I'm taking these rubber I have to open the boxes check for anything and then pass it down and, and we just keep checking through the line there's our other fearless leader and the other group. Our church took up two tables worth of um, groups to, to volunteer to do this. So um, it was a great day and we had a blast. This is just an overview of the whole facility. It is a well-oiled machine and they know exactly how to just keep things moving. There's a volunteer bringing a new group in to do some work it is an amazing amazing look look at all those boxes every one of those boxes are filled with shoes and then we go through them and fill a box back up it is wonderful um, they do have filler items that are donated if a box is half empty and it was sad to hear that some um, people have said, well, we know they fill them up, so we only buy a couple of things. Um, th th you shouldn't do that. The fillers are just if they need any, if they have to remove an item to put back in. So if you do a box, be sure to fill it as full as you can. These are items that can't go. Um, toothpaste, anything with liquid, those things cannot go. Even the balls that are filled, the, the bouncy balls that are filled with um, liquid. Oh, look, I didn't know that view came. That was pretty good. Uh, the shoebox hospital is when a shoebox is beaten up or gotten torn or the lid didn't ripped or whatever. They rebox them in a, and fix a new box and put them in there. These are the filler items that they bring to each. Each one of those tables has like three bins of filler items. Um, to one, if they have to take out an item, um, no war toys because some of these children are in war torn areas. So we take some items out. Made it, huh? Said he never seen such blue water and all his life. 
It's the most beautiful. We're stopping to eat supper. Everybody's unloading from the van. The other cars have not arrived yet. Uh, yeah, there's a one of the trucks down there. They they are with us. But anyway, we're stopping here. Uh, we just had lunch there at the place, but you know, a church can't our church can't go out and do something without stopping to eat. So we're going into Harrisburg Family Restaurant. We're going in here. They've got a they know a big crowd's coming. They just don't know it's this crowd. So we're headed in. Let's see if Bryant's on the list. Up, oh, I don't see his name. I don't want to gross any of y'all out, but I love chicken livers, and that's what I ordered. And I probably ate half of them, and this is what I'm going home with. Uh, look at the dessert. Well, guys, we are home from our eventful day at the processing center, the Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child. What a blessing. And we got home, we turned the news on, and it was the sweetest thing. On our local news, they actually did a story on a young man who works at a, was it a metal shop or something? In High Point, North Carolina. And he... As a young child, he was from Sudan. They had to flee Sudan because of the war. Um, but as a young child, he received one of those boxes. And he was talking about how it changed his life. He said, you would be so excited. He goes, you literally spun around with excitement all day when you received that box. And he said, the basic things that... Of shoes. He just kept talking about how he had shoes. They had to walk and walk for miles when they were fleeing Sudan. And he was just telling about how he was a recipient. His business, not knowing his story, the place where he works, his place of employment, did not know his story about the shoebox. But the owner of this business wanted to do the shoeboxes as a company. And they, re they did over 3,000 boxes. And... Oh, it was such a good story. It was, he would, you could just see his, he's a grown man now, but his face just lit up talking about the shoe boxes. And it just makes me so emotional. I think it is an amazing ministry to sew into. Um, we had a blast today. We were not able to film a whole lot. So what I'm going to do is I don't know how much is on here and I won't know that till I get ready to edit. But there was a few clips from yesterday. I made my own homemade uh, brown sugar. I made a, a sourdough, like an instant sourdough starter. Not really instant, but a, a faster sourdough starter. I'm going to try this. I've never tried it. I have done. I did those two things, and I didn't put those in yesterday's because the video was so long. So what I'm going to do, if there's not enough footage on today's video, I'm going to add those in. So... Let me go ahead and add in um, a couple clips here, and then I'll come back and tell you goodnight. Today, I'm just going to get started first, putting things away. I have to clean out the dishwasher. I have some Thanksgiving dishes that need to still to be washed that we had just sat out on the porch, like the, the roasting pan and so forth. Uh, I, my intentions were to get those in the dishwasher now. However, <laughs> making cookies later, I did ended up not getting those in the dishwasher so those will have to wait for another day they were washed out when um, they came out of the oven but they just needed to have some more done so we are going to just let you listen to some music and enjoy me putting dishes away
I am completely out of brown sugar. So I'm going to make my own. Um, if I'm at the store and I'm there, I don't mind picking it up. Um, but I'm not at the store. I don't know when I'll need some brown sugar. So I want to go ahead and make my, I had an extra bag of sugar too. And this bag is solid, solid as a rock. I mean, some obvious moisture has gotten to this at some point in time. So I'm going to have to kind of scrape and I'm not sure how many, I don't want to break my, my, my nice metal things are dirty. So let's see. I'm going to try to scoop out about eight cups. We'll see how that goes. I stopped at six cups. So I'm actually going to go ahead. I've got my whisk attachment on. It's in here. I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of get that started. And I'm going to run to the cabinet and get my molasses and I'll be right back. I'm going to add a few teaspoons to a tablespoon per cup of um, sugar. And I'm just going to eyeball this. Okay, I'm going to stop there and see where we go. I'm going to turn it on high, and I'll see you back when our brown sugar is made. All right, everyone. We are done. Whoops. Get back in there. I just washed my counter off, so it's clean. Get in there. See, so, yeah, I still have my rags in here. Okay. So, let's get this it look y'all this smells so delicious it just smells wonderful um makes me want to make something now like like a ginger snap or something or molasses cookies but i've already got molasses cookies in the refrigerator oh goodness <clears throat> now that looks so much better than store-bought i mean really Okay, so let's fill up our container and then I can get this stickiness cleaned up. I did scrape the sides one time because the, the sugar kind of, it billowed up the side and I wanted to be sure all the sides were getting incorporated. You'll see, sometimes you'll get by a bag of brown sugar and you'll see little dark clumps. What that is, is just molasses that did not get like fully broken up and mixed with the sugar. So that's why I did scrape the sides because I wanted to be sure. <clears throat> and I could actually finish that bag of sugar and make some more and just fill up my container. But I kind of want to get cleaned up, get some laundry started, and think about tonight's services what I'm going to wear. Um, I, I normally dress Christmassy on, on Hanging of the Greens, but when I lost all my weight, I out, I mean, I didn't outgrow. I shrunk out of my large dressy Christmas items. Now, if I keep eating the way I've been eating here lately, I'm going to be right back in them. But... <laughs> We won't go there. Um, so really the only things Christmassy I have are, you know, not cartoony, but not elegant either. So what I think I'm going to do is um, I bought a kimono at Versona the other day for $9.99 on the clearance rack. I think I'm going to wear that. And um, so... I'm going to clean up, get laundry started, and um, just kind of chill for the rest of the day. And when the cookies have chilled long enough, we'll finish those off. So, all right, I'll meet you back here when it's time to cut out the cookies. Since I'm feeling all domestic today, I thought I'd do something else. Um, 
I have tried sourdough starters before. If you remember back, if you followed me for a long time, I even had a starter named Willis and I named him Willis and I loved Willis, but um, I eventually let Willis go. <laughs> and so I have a dear lady and who is well seasoned. She makes sourdough bread for stores, for, for restaurants. She makes sourdough bread a lot and she keeps kind of what I mean, as far as starters go, it's kind of an instant starter and it actually uses yeast. And she has told me and told me she is going to teach me how to make it. Um, we have not gotten together yet for her to teach me how to do it, but I've looked up some recipes. So I think I'm going to start one and um, just see how it does. So it um, it does call for yeast and um, but we're, we're just I'm going to kind of I've gotten a halfway recipe and we're just going to go with it from there um, the recipe i use is does measure by weight and we are actually going to measure um, just by measurements so let me um, grab my utensils i'll meet you back right here and we'll get it started real quick okay i'm going to use here a third of a cup of bread flour you could use all purpose if you don't have bread flour um, the, in fact the recipe actually called for all purpose but um and I'm going to try to get this in here without spilling it everywhere. Okay. And to that, let me grab a little pinch of sugar. I don't want much, but I do want the yeast to be able to feed on a little something. Now, this did the recipe did not call for a pinch of sugar or anything. But um, I thought it might just help it for the yeast to feed on something. And I believe it was half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of yeast. And I'm using, I always, I use them interchangeably, the yeast or active yeast. And um, I just happen to have this right now and I use the same. So I'm going in with like half a teaspoon. All right. And I want the same exact measurement. And like I said, a true bread maker makes it by weight, but I don't want to pull out my scale and all that. So I'm just going to fill up the same measuring cup with the same amount of liquid um, as the bread flour, and we're going to give it a stir. Okay, I'm going in here with the water, and I did it, um, I guess, lukewarm. Definitely wasn't hot. And we're going to give this a stir. Now, you could, um, some of the recipes I saw did add salt, but sometimes salt can kill the yeast. So I'm choosing to wait until I actually make the bread. And you want to get this stirred up good. I look in the bottom of the jar to be sure I'm getting all the dry. See, I have some dry there. I have some dry there that's not incorporated. So I want to use my spoon over there and get all that and incorporate that all stir it up really good <clears throat> and it looks like a really loose very very loose it looks like a cake batter okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to set this over to the side and I'm going to cover it. I'm just going to lay a towel over top of it and we're going to set it over just somewhere nice and warm and we'll check on it tomorrow. Now when I called that an instant sourdough starter, that doesn't mean you make it and it's ready to use right then. No, sourdough starters usually take days and days and days. This should be ready tomorrow or the next day. So I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to use it because my weekend starting tomorrow is packed full. Today is the last day I really have at home until I don't know when 
Um, I know Monday. I mean, I'll be home some on Sunday, but Sunday is the cookie exchange. No, it's not. It's Monday. I have Sunday here at home. Uh, no, I don't. I have a birthday party. My uncle is turning 90. And so after church, we'll probably go eat lunch and then we'll head to my uncle's 90th birthday party. And then I should be at home on Sunday night. So I could make a loaf of bread Sunday night, but I'll probably be baking my cookies for and cleaning house. Oh, not cleaning house. Not on Sunday. I know. I know. But if something needs to be picked up, I don't mind doing that. In fact, that's relaxing to me. And that is a lot of my prayer time is when I'm picking up and cleaning and um, straightening. So I, I, that's a lot of time I spend with the Lord. So I don't look at that as work, <laughs> even though I guess the world probably does. <clears throat> but um, we have, we're farmers. We have to farm on Sunday. So um you know, if the ox is in the ditch, you got to get it out. But um, I won't be doing cleaning, cleaning. But um, whatever I'm doing on Sunday, I, I, I'll probably be preparing for Monday's cookie exchange. So after Tuesday, well, after Monday, I can really kind of just chill out a little bit. On Tuesday, we have uh, Levi's program. I can't wait. I can't wait. And uh, Friday, we have a special day with Levi, and I'm just super excited. So, all right. Well, I'm still cleaning up the kitchen from my molasses, I mean, my brown sugar making, my cookies, and now my um, sourdough starter. So, I'm interested to see what it looks like in the morning. I was standing over here at the sourdough starter with that has the yeast in it, and I couldn't help myself. You will see it. <laughs> Can y'all believe that? Look at those bubbles. Now, it'll probably deflate by morning, which is what I expect. But um, I just thought we'd take a quick glance. Okay, well, there you go. We are super excited. Tomorrow, we get to go with Levi, Levi's Daycare is taking a field trip to uh, Disney on Ice and they like chaperones to go with the kids. So, Papa and Bubbles is going with Levi to Disney on Ice and we're excited. And then tomorrow night we have the Asheboro Christmas Parade. So, tomorrow is going to be an eventful day. Like I said, this week it is something every single day until like Tuesday or Wednesday. So, anyway, I'm excited. Join us Thank you for being with us. Thank you for spending your day with us. I love spending my day with you guys. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.